very good evening and welcome to DPS 2021. My name is Pooja Kamath and I'm a program manager with the Azure SQL DB hyperscale team, which means I work with hyperscale customers uh, and together with the program management team, we define what the future of the hyperscale DB looks like. Uh, and we bring features that can help customers with their challenges. So today with me, I have my co-speaker Balmukun. Thanks, Pooja. Uh, uh, welcome again, everyone. And uh, this is another other episode and session in DPS 2021. Good to be back. Uh, as Pooja said, I'm also one of the program managers with the uh, Azure SQL database team, uh, focusing on hyperscale and pretty much everything about Azure SQL DB. Uh, so I think we will start the session, but wait, Pooja, what's going on with the background of yours? You used to have a different background. Today you have an empty supermarket. What's I'm glad on? you noticed. I was waiting for you to notice that. Well, today we're going to be talking about, you know, some cool features about uh, hyperscale. So I just wanted to make this more relatable. So as an example, we're going to be talking about a startup company today. Uh, discuss what kind of challenges it faces and see how hyperscale is going to help us. So, uh, you know, as we all know, uh, when COVID hit India, we had uh, lockdowns that were, uh, uh, you know, across the country. And so we have DPS India Grocer, which is one of our uh, grocery stores that had an online presence. And they had an unprecedented growth uh, due to this lockdown uh, because of uh, shoppers moving on to shopping online. So a quick uh, introduction about this company a bit. It's a fairly young startup. Uh, that has just growing in the space and uh, it has many products and categories. Uh, you know, we have about 50,000 uh, uh, different products with 500 plus catalog products. Uh, and during COVID, we saw that the load has increased from what it used to be was like a 30K orders per day because it used to serve only in Bangalore, which was its headquarters, to about 300 orders per day now uh, it's serving across 15 plus cities across India so uh, this particular startup had a challenge to ensure an uninterrupted experience for its customers as you all know this meant a lot of new customers we had about 80 percent increase in the customer user base and along with doing all of this it had to maintain its competitive advantage of uh, being able to do data analytics sales forecasting and everything what its competitors are doing so I think today we're going to be talking about this, understand these challenges and see how hyperscale helps us. Uh, but before going into that, Balmukund, I did promise our new viewers that we'll be doing a quick recap of what the sure. hyperscale architecture is. So can we get into it real quick and understand how uh, the hyperscale architecture looks like? Yep, sure. So let's go to the next slide. And I knew this question will come, so I have the things <laughs> ready for you. Uh, so essentially, if you really see, right, uh, uh, hyperscale is cloud native, uh, so to say, a database, which means it is built and designed for the cloud. Uh, typically, if you remember when you when we worked old times in SQL Server, there used to be a SQL uh, process and then database file attached uh, to the server on the same right. machine. Uh, which which basically defeats the whole purpose of scalability to go bigger. Uh, instead of the monolithic database uh, of uh, single server bounded, we have come up with an architecture where the storage and the compute are decoupled with each other, which means then they can scale independently, which means if you want to grow the number of CPUs, you can do that. So, uh, and again, it is just the same code as a SQL server. Um, uh, as, okay. as if I if I show you on the screen, uh, there's a pointer, and there you go. So this is the primary compute where user will connect. Uh, there's a secondary compute, which is the secondary replica where the read-only load can be used. Mm -hmm. And behind the scene, uh, there's a paid server which is the, which holds the database files for us. And as you can see, these paid servers are are on a different machine altogether as compared to the primary compute, which means. Now I have a capability to keep adding more and more page server, which means if mm -hmm. my database size grows, I can keep adding more page server to accommodate the size of the database of the future growth also, which means right now I have only four. If my database grows, I'll make it five and then six and so on. And we, we typically support up to 100 terabyte of the database. That's awesome. Th th that's, a, that's a cool, cool thing. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah, so uh, so don't mind me quizzing you. I'm going to play the customer today for my uh, DPS Grocer India company, and I'm going to go put some questions across to you to help me with yep. my challenges. So one yep. of the questions that I have is, uh, 
I know when we're talking about hyperscale, we're talking about amazing growth and, you know, we have large databases and we say hyper and scale. Uh, what about smaller databases? Is this only a good fit for large databases? What if I start another company where I have smaller databases? Is it too complex to use hyperscale? Uh, well, that's a misconception. Uh, hyperscale is not only for very large databases. If you are starting, if you want a piece of mind, uh, when you when you typically provision a machine, you decide the hardware you need, right? You need you decide number of number of CPUs you need, you know how much space do you need. But in in hyperscale, you need not bother about you know what is my growth going to happen. Do I need to go to a new machine? So you start small, pay small, and as you grow, you 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 get the benefit of unlimited scaling of the database to 100 terabyte. So it is not just meant for a smaller database. It, 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 it can be used for any size of database. So hyperscale name has given impression to people about huge databases, which is not the true case here. You can still go with small database and have a peace of mind that I, I do not worry about the massive scale growth, which might happen, which has happened to your company as well. Well, that, that's awesome. I mean, uh, that's perfect for a company like uh, the DPS India Grocer. You know, we we had this kind of unanticipated growth. Uh, while we did see the number of customers were growing on year on year by 20%, this time we had like a 80% customer growth and uh, and we, we weren't prepared for it. Uh, so that's that's I think that's a perfect use case for something like uh, hyperscale. So yeah. uh, so you kind of covered by uh, for any planned and explosive growth as well. So can you show us how uh, you know how we can provision a hyperscale server? Sure. OK, so let me uh, go ahead and uh, share the screen. So here's a screen where uh, where I have, which I've shared where you can see one of the you know, uh, SQL Server, logical SQL Server called as DPS 2021. And right. I'm going to show you how easy it is to create a database with a mm -hmm. choice of yours. So click on okay. this Create Database button where my mouse right now is. And once mm -hmm. I press the button, I'm going to be having a wizard kind of experience where you know, I put the database name. So let's call it as DPS 2021 DB Demo. And mm -hmm. then this is the place where you choose what tier you want. You want a general purpose database, you want a hyperscale database or a business critical database. These are the yeah. name in vCore model and there are uh, or older, older surprising model was DTU based model where where you you pay based on the DTUs, not not vCore and storage. Now the yeah. let's look at the general purpose database, right? And if you look at here, you just notice two sliders, right? One is called as vCores and the other is called as database size, which means right. If you are on two core, you can maximum mm -hmm. go up to one terabyte. Mm -hmm. So if you want to go beyond one terabyte on two cores, no, you cannot do that. Uh, you have to right. increase the number of cores. That's where the coupling between uh, coupling between the number of V cores and the storage is. Now let's look at the hyperscale. If I change the drop down and choose option, which is hyperscale service tier, right. you would notice that do you still see two slider, but the second one slider is something different, which which we'll talk about later. Mm -hmm. Only one slider left, which says choose the number of cores you want. And I can go from all the way down from two cores till all the way up to 80 V cores. Right? Awesome. Which means I can have two V core database and still can have 100 terabyte of storage, which is um, awesome, right? If you have That's a awesome. if you have a yeah. growth, uh, no need to worry about it. Just have a peace of mind. Decide the number of cores. Yeah, absolutely. There. And I, I and, think that also yeah. brings in a lot of crucial savings, right? Uh, I could yeah. be having a large database, uh, which is not used very often. Uh, so I don't require that kind of compute. Uh, and, uh, you know, I can just be paying for what I'm going to be using. So uh, for, for DPS India Grocer, who's building their online presence and reputation, I think cost savings is an important factor here. And yeah. uh, uh, this, is, this is pretty great, yeah. Sure. So exactly. So so as you can see, right? If you have a, you, you can have a large database of let's say seventy terabyte mm -hmm. with just two cores, which is which is, is which was not possible in, in which was not possible in other other tiers. So uh, so this was awesome, uh, uh, Malmukun. I think this is probably the biggest effort ever done in Azure SQL. You know where the monolith was deassembled and you have uh, the decoupling of the compute and storage. 
but for a company that's uh, just getting into the scene, uh, you know, going in with a different architecture is slightly tricky. You know, I'm a little concerned about that, about what, whether I'd like to move to a new architecture. All right. So, uh, you know, if you know T-SQL, if you know how to create a table, if you know what, how to the select queries, mm -hmm. you already know hyperscale because the programming model has not changed. It is the same old SQL which you have loved so far. It is it is not a new SQL server altogether. It's just the just the you can imagine something changed in the back end, but the interface is mm -hmm. the same, which means same T SQL, uh, same select statement, same update, same delete, everything remains just the same, which means if you know SQL, nothing to learn new. Now to add to that, typically you know, SQL was you know more of RDBMS, you know, but not non, not of a no SQL database. With, with right. the enhancement which we have done, uh, we support JSON, we support graph. Uh, so there right. are, uh, we support columns for as well. So there are new capabilities uh, as and when there's a demand, we build those capability in in, uh, in in the database. So, uh, you know, your time to market is really quick. Like if you know SQL uh, programming, you know hyperscale programming as well, because both are just the same. That's, that's pretty awesome. I think uh, with competitors, I think we de definitely use or uh, need to use different databases for some of the things you mentioned, like, yeah. you know, graph and JSON and things like that. So uh, I think this is, uh, uh, you know, a, a great thing. And uh, you're basically using the familiar SQL Server engine is what I understand from what you're saying. It's yes. just built on a unique cloud native architecture. And uh, what we're going to get is uh, a, a database that has uh, remove the practical limits of the traditional SQL Server that we've seen. So uh, that's that's great. I, I think these, this decoupling of the storage and compute has also created a lot of different advantages for us. So can you tell me from a developer perspective why I'd like to use uh, Hyperscale? Is there any great advantage for me? Sure. So let, let, let me just show you something, something interesting, right? Mm -hmm. uh, now, typically, when you have to make a copy of a database of, let's say, um, 10 terabyte in size. How long do you think you will take? Oh, quite a bit. Yeah. A bit. What yeah. if I? I am. I am not even trying to make these copies, by the way. <laughs> right. So now, now let's make make it. What if I ask 20 terabyte? Will whatever number you thought in mind, will you double that number? If I say 20 terabyte uh, database copy? Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And the reason you will do that because. In back of your mind, you have you you know so. that you are going to take a backup of the database, make a copy of it, because right. of the de decoupling which I explained earlier, right? Mm -hmm. uh, we can do faster database copy in hyperscale. And let me quickly show you uh, the, what, what magic can happen. Recently, there was a blog post published, right, uh, mm -hmm. by one of one of our uh, our uh, team member Denzel. And if you really see the uh, you know, so when you do a database copy, you can do within the region and across the region. When right. you do within the within the region, it is it is uh, it is not a not the deep copy, which means you're not it is not a size of data operation. Mm -hmm. uh, when it is within the region, it totally is just spinning up uh, uh, spinning up the new compute and you know restoring with the snapshot what we create. It is not a typical VAK file and TRN file backup if you which you are uh, comfortable okay. with. This is a different kind of architecture in terms of backup because of the Different architecture of the page server, right? So right. if you notice, uh, if you notice, uh, and uh, let's see, you know, database size one terabyte. Time to restore twelve minutes. Which Am is I seeing that right? Yeah, it is one to twelve, and let me increase the size wow. to seven point two terabyte. And interestingly, the number is increased just by one minute. That is cool. Yeah, I mean. Is that that super cool? Making dev copies is going to be so easy. It's so easy. it's almost the same for a one terabyte and a seven terabyte database. That's that's, that's, that's cool. pretty awesome. It's magic indeed. <laughs> right. Um, and so we just talked about uh, database copy. Right. Uh, let's think about uh, you know as a developer, there are situations when you have to. When you have to restore uh, a database, uh, maybe mm -hmm. a dev database, or go go back in time, you have to restore the database to a previous oh, copy. Yes. Uh, you know, if you remember, the term, remember. refresh, right? Take a yes. backup of production, restore on dev, and start using that so that you have a data to test and stuff like that. Or even, you know, if you want to play with the production database with some new functionality, you will do a backup restore. Uh, so restore from a previous copy, or you know, or or, or from a, one of the backup which was taken. Uh, I, I know what you're getting to. You know, I've I've waited 
days sometimes to get my uh, backup restored. Uh, yep. We're going through a similar challenge with uh, DPS India Grocer. Uh, you know, we're just getting a lot of new products. I, like I said, we have about 50,000 products and mm -hmm. 500 plus brands and each day it's just growing. So while I know that hyperscale can give me the peace of mind, you said to grow, I'm really concerned about what I'm going to do. I, I shudder to think about restoring a backup. Okay. Yeah, so while you were talking, I was trying to figure out the screen which I am supposed to show. Uh, so let's go to you know our DPS 2021 server, mm -hmm. and I already have some database created, which is like DPS Jabo DB. And if I refresh, I guess I'm going to get a new database again because I remember creating two databases. But let's see uh, whether mm -hmm. the second one made uh, to the life or not. And it didn't because of some problem. Anyways, so this is the database what I have, right? Uh, and now if I have to do a, a restore of a database, I go inside the database, which is over here. Right. And then I have a button called restore here, right? Mm -hmm. And this restore of 750 GB, close 250 TB, 250 GB less than or terabyte. If I do wow. a restore of a database, you know, this, this might take a while if it, this was a non hyperscale database. So I have a capability to do a, a point-in-time restore. All we need is mm -hmm. the database name and how many cores you need. And that's it. And you say review and create and then just restore the database. Now, because wow. of the architecture of mm -hmm. the snapshot copy of the paid server, uh, you know, we just need to take the snapshot of the backup which was taken and then replay the log which was, which was generated post those snapshots, which means, you know, it is not a size of data operation because you are restoring the snapshot, uh, which happens on the regular point of time for each page server, and then you restore those snapshot and then whatever timeline they are on, and then you apply the transition log backup, not restoring the whole backup per se. So that's that's pretty fast. That is yeah. cool. So backups are going to be nearly instantaneous because of uh, you know file snapshots and. Oh, that's that's going to be awesome. So yeah. uh, I think this is pretty much going to be my favorite thing about hyperscale. If I right, can get right. my uh, restores in minutes rather than hours or days. Yeah, that's that's pretty cool. But I think uh, this probably has got to be my most favorite thing about hyperscale. Uh, okay. Fast restores, amazing. Yeah, this is this is damn cool. Yeah. Cool. Uh, so, OK, uh, you have seen a lot of cool things, uh, right? Uh, what, what else is is uh, so when you're into this business of running production workload, which is growing, what are the other problem you, you typically see, Pooja? I have a lot of problems that are keeping me up at night, but uh, maybe you can see if you can help me with this one. Um, so like we mentioned before, um, the traffic on our uh, site, we had about 30 K orders per day, which we thought was great. Uh, but this was pre-COVID and uh, post-COVID and the lockdown, uh, we are seeing a crazy amount of orders, about 300,000 orders per day. And more and okay. more people who used to shop in a supermarket are now are shopping online. And uh, the the part about this that, that, is, that was difficult for us and was a challenge is that it happened over a span of three months. And uh, now we're anticipating a huge, massive increase in traffic during some of our festival days. Like we have a Diwali sale with a lot right. of new um, brands. So uh, that's something that uh, we worry about, okay. about being able to give uninterrupted service to our Un Okay, uh, got customers. it. So I think uh, something you will like, uh, because of this new architecture, which I explained mm -hmm. earlier, of decoupling of storage and uh, compute via the paid server, Scaling yeah. up is easy. Scaling up is pretty easy. Uh, when I say easy, it takes it takes few minutes to go from two core to eighty cores. You need not, and that is that is irrespective of database size. That's the cool part, right? Uh, which means, if you remember, Im imagine the picture again and think about that uh, page server and compute. Right. All you need, all we need now is to move the compute to a different node and reuse the same page server. Which means we are not doing data movement in terms of moving the data of page server, which makes this scaling pretty fast. And I'll show you how it is done uh, from the portal. You can do from other uh, yeah. other ways as well. Yeah. So I'm going to the database. And all I need to do is go to computer storage, which is over here. Once I do that, the next step is pretty tough step. And all you need to do, move your mouse from here to here. 
and you are on you are hitting going to hit ATV codes once I hit apply button. So if I hit that and uh, you know just wait for it, probably uh, you know now it is as you can see it is scaling up right now, and hopefully right. uh, while we uh, finish and uh, the next topic it should be done. So let it give it its time and then. Uh, other thing now you might wonder, right? When there's a scaling up happening, what is happening with my users who are working? Is that it? Uh, that, that was going to be my next question next because question. Yeah. I'm, uh, I can't wait for 10 minutes uh, for my user. We, we, can't, we can't have a downtime at all. Exactly, yeah. So essentially, you know, what is, what is happening currently is, you know, the user is still using the database. One of the things which you, you need to keep in mind whenever you develop any cloud application is retry of connections. And mm -hmm. in, 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 you know, either you have to write the complex logic to do a retry or you can use you know, a SQL client library, which is, which is a part of .NET. And recently that is the latest version which came in, in, in preview, uh, which has you know, its capability to uh, you know, make easy retries uh, of uh, easy retries uh, of the connection and did, did you see the screen? I, I did. You did? Okay. Are you I, I, I was, speaking and there you go. Right. Wow. So and it, we've uh, and we are on eighty cores. We are on eighty cores. To eighty cores. That is that is super awesome. Yeah. Right. So and yeah, that's that's the problem I've scaled. I hear you say this is an online operation. So my yeah. users are still going to continue using a it. user you might have a little disconnection for a small amount of time, but your application should have a retry. Uh, using uh, uh, either your own custom logic, but if you're on .NET, you can try SQL client uh, native library in version three, uh, uh, which where we introduce the you know a custom retry logic, uh, which is which is automatically retry based on some parameter. So if you, you use that uh, as transparent as possible, yes, yeah? as as smooth as possible. Yeah. Yeah, and I believe you can scale down if you want to during non picas as well, just yes, like you. Yes. Right. So it is it is not auto as of now, but but you know there are ways you can write the custom script where you okay. think that you know morning eight o'clock I want it to go to ATV cores, uh, mm -hmm. afternoon four o'clock uh, my that business which I'm in you know it is between eight to four or good company nine to six whatever, and then you know based on that you can say scale up my database by a script, scale down the database by the script. So that's that's pretty much doable. So. You can save a lot of money. You're giving money. away your secrets of uh, customers being able to save money. Yeah. yeah. Cool. Um, so that I think cool. uh, that, that's, that's what I had for my demo. That's pretty cool. I think you're enjoying this a bit too much, showing off the copies, the fast restores, and uh, scaling up from two to eighty cores in a few minutes. That that was really awesome. Thanks, Malik. Sure. So I think uh, now, Pooja, uh, let me ask you this. Do you really think I'm showing off a little bit too much? Maybe it's time <laughs> yes, for me to become are. the customer. <laughs> okay, I so. think you're just having too much fun showing off hyperscale. I think it's yeah. let me have some fun too. <laughs> sure, yeah. So let me become the customer and you become Pooja, right? Okay, yeah. so um, let's do this way. Let me quickly. Okay, so now I'm the customer. And uh, so, you're... Yeah, so so I think Pooja, you've shown me uh, good enough uh, demos about uh, faster restore, copy, but my problem is different now. As a DPS India grocer company, uh, I am having challenge where you know I have a requirement to run the workload, which is a reporting workload on the database. Uh, I cannot do that on this database because this is serving my many customers, and I don't want to hamper their performance. Is there any anything which Hyperscale can do to help me out, Pooja? I think uh, you're in luck. I'm going to show you a few cool things too. And uh, we look at what replicas are. I'm going to start with uh, what replicas are. A quick step back to understand this. Uh, so I'm on this page where uh, I'm able to create a SQL database. And if I go ahead and I say that I want to create a hyperscale database, uh, like you showed earlier, uh, we looked at how you can increase the recourse and you have uh, you know, unlimited storage, basically. What we didn't talk about earlier was this space, which is uh, the high availability secondary replicas. So uh, if we go back to take a quick look at the architecture here, uh, you know, Balmo can explain to us that uh, you have a, a paid server and you have the compute nodes. Now, uh, your primary compute node is nothing but your primary node. 
one that serves the read and write requests. And along with this, you can also have the secondary compute nodes. And if you notice here, the secondary compute nodes also are uh, have the connection with the same page servers. Now, these secondary compute nodes can be used for different reasons. And uh, because of this, we have uh, three different types of secondary compute or secondary replicas. So uh, let's look at this. Uh, when we're looking at the create database, uh, we're seeing that there is something called a high availability secondary replica. So this is something that's been around uh, and you probably heard of it in uh, you know, other database service tiers. And as the name suggests, it's something that provides high availability and improves the SLA of your hyperscale database. So when you're creating a database, by default, this slider is going to be set to one, which means you're going to have at least one high availability replica that is set. Uh, you can increase this to you know, two replicas and you know, go up to four. Uh, and uh, because of the reason that we're going to provide high availability here, it means that your primary and your secondary always have to be in sync which also comes uh, to the point that if you notice, uh, I'm, while I'm creating the replicas here, I do not have a choice to change any of the hardware configuration. So if, I'm, if I have my primary with six cores, let's say I'm creating a primary with six cores here, I am going ahead and creating a, a secondary replica. It's also going to be six V cores. So, that's how your secondary replica is going to be for a high availability here. So as you see here, it's also going to be uh, used for simple read scale scenarios. When I say that, it means that uh, I can actually go ahead and connect to that database by using the application intent read only in my application. Uh, so this means it's going to route read requests to that particular replica. The one of the drawbacks here uh, with high availability replicas is that you will not be able to see them on the portal or it does not have a specific connection string that you will be reaching out to uh, because it's essentially the same connection string as your regular database. So this is, let's say this is my uh, demo database here and I'm looking at the replicas. So I'll be able to see that it has only a primary replica. I cannot see my high availability replica there. Uh, so you're just going to have to use the application intent read only to, you know, to read scale queries. So, so yeah. now in my in my startup, you know, uh, good mm -hmm. to have, uh, you know, HA replica for high availability, but mm -hmm. it is a simple scale out, right? Uh, you know, I need to uh, pass the connection string with the application intent read only, and then it will route the connection in round one fashion. But right. that's not something which I'm looking for. I, I need I need my analytical query to have more power in terms of CPU. Is there something which uh, we have? You can absolutely have that. And that's uh, something that we're going to be talking today. Uh, and I'm going to go ahead and hit create replica for one of my databases here. And if I come down here, uh, I can see that there are two different options that I see here. Uh, so before I jump into your issue of being able to have, uh, you know, a, a more complex read scale out, a quick, uh, a, you know, quick uh, thing about what a geo replica is. It's it's pretty simple. It's it's a, a replica that is going to reside on a different logical server than the primary. So uh, as you've seen here earlier, we had one in the East US and we had a West US. Uh, it's basically DR that will protect you from, you know, prolonged region outages. So uh, geo replicas takes a little more time to create because it's not going to have, it, it's a data copy operation and we're basically right. not using the same one. So coming to your point now about, uh, you said you have a more complex data operation, uh, sorry, read scale operation that you'd need. And this is the replica type that you're gonna want for your company. So it's called a named replica. It resides in the same region as the primary and if you notice one thing over here, uh, when I click on named replica, I'm going to get a different database name here. I can name it whatever I want to. Uh, I can, uh, uh, you know, pick up a logical server if I want to. And the best part here is that I can even go ahead and change my compute and storage. So I can go ahead and 
changed my V cores to, let's say, I can have a primary replica of two cores and I can have a secondary replica that has a huge analytical workload. Um, maybe, you know, you're doing some huge uh, data analysis or using Spark or, uh, you know, whatever you want to for data science, uh, it can, you can have a, a replica that's independent of the size of your primary. So uh, I think to get you to understand a little more on this, uh, I'm going to show you a real quick demo for this. That will be so, awesome. Yeah. Cool. So I'm using a open source tool called Locust, and I have a application that I have kind of created on um, uh, on Azure, and uh, this is an application used to simulate some workload uh, for a customer who's going to be adding a. a stuff into their shopping cart, uh, which is very relevant to us. And uh, there is uh, customers who are retrieving items from their shopping cart as well. What we also have, though, is a similar uh, situation similar to what you mentioned. Uh, you know, you can have uh, somebody or someone who's doing a huge, uh, uh, you know, resource intensive read workload on the primary replica. And uh, this, uh, what, what do you think will happen here if somebody is using a uh, uh, using up the resources. This is the precise problem I was talking about. Is it yeah. a demo or you you just <laughs> knew what problem I'm having? Because that's the precise problem I was talking about. I don't yeah. want to impact my uh, my customers who are right. who are going to pay me pay my company uh, mm -hmm. to you know to something who is a developer who wants to run the analytical query and uh, and do do those things. So I think that's precisely my problem is. So good, go ahead. That's great. Okay, so um, like I said, I have uh, actually gone ahead and I have created a application on Azure and uh, this is a load testing tool that we're going to be using to simulate the workload. So like I said, I have a application uh, and I'm going to be using an open source tool to uh, kind of load test this and we'll have users who are putting their stuff into a shopping cart. So I don't know about you, but if I have a, a if I'm facing a slowness on a site while shopping, I kind of move on to the next one. So I think this is a problem that really needs to be solved. And uh, Let's say we don't have the time to, you know, go figure out, uh, you know, how to, uh, uh, you know, go ahead and uh, uh, see what this what this particular resource intensive operation is doing or how do we fine tune it, right? At this point, we just want to be able to, you know, fix things. So I'm going to go ahead and show you a, a quick um, demo here. Okay, so. This is a, a query that is used to retrieve the resource stats. As of now, there's not any uh, uh, work happening here. So I'm going to hit a new test. I'm going to go ahead and simulate 100 users. I know you have way more users than this, but uh, oh, yeah. this is a demo. So uh, I'm just going to reset some stats here. And uh, let's just wait for it to kind of spawn the users. And while that's happening, I'm also going to go back and uh, take a look at my resource stats to see what is happening. Okay, so as you can see, I am starting to see some load on this particular database. Let me go ahead and see how this is coming along. So uh, while this is running, you can see that this definitely is a resource intensive application, uh, but this is my shopping cart uh, scenario where users are going to be adding this to. And if you wait a little longer, you will start to see that this is also going to increase its time uh, as we had anticipated. So uh, let's go ahead and see how our CPU is doing now. And uh, as you can see, this is slowly getting better. I'm at 99% CPU here. Oh, OK. And uh, that definitely means that someone is not getting the resources that uh, we want and uh, that's going to be definitely our shopping cart here so I think this is the exactly same thing like you know one day data science uh, guy is trying to run some query to do some data right. analysis mm -hmm. and that is hampering my real business of shopping cart so uh, what i see is there is like uh, time uh, average time is like 300 for a user in shopping yes. carts yeah. And uh, yeah. okay, that's that's little high. I might yeah. uh, stop shopping. 
<laughs> all right. So at this point, uh, you know, all the load is coming on to this particular uh, primary replica. We don't have a named replica yet. So I'm going to go ahead and create a named replica and uh, let's see what happens here. OK, so uh, a simple one I can I, I can definitely create it from the portal as well. I'm just going to uh, alter my database and create a named replica here. OK, so it'll take a few uh, uh, seconds or like uh, it's it's a very quick operation. And like we said, uh, this is how a named replica would be. Uh, you just have an independent secondary compute node and you're essentially using the same page servers as your primary. So the time required to spin up a named replica is going to be absolutely quick. So, uh, you know, anytime you're facing this issue and you want to kind of send your read workloads to a named replica, you can spin up as much as 30 named replicas, free zero. So let's see if oh, that is going to You said third one three or three zero? Three zero. Three oh, zero. 30. Oh, wow. <laughs> wow. So right. which means which means if I if I need some if I get some data scientist, he want to run some queries, I can spin up a uh, spin up a database, give it to them, give it to them, and then uh, once they're done, just kill the replica without affecting. Wow. <laughs> That's a good use case. You yeah. seem to be learning how to save costs. That's that's I that's do. exactly that's it. that's that's what my company's goal is: make <laughs> more profit. That's great. So look at this. I I already see that I have a named replica here. That that was super quick, right? And uh, and this is again like you showed us how uh, you know a copy and a restore is uh, doesn't depend on the size. Uh, mm -hmm. This is the same thing with named replicas as well. OK, so uh, let's go ahead and now uh, as part of my uh, application, what I'm doing is uh, I'm going to insert into a table. So I've uh, added logic to the application such that it can recognize that I have a named replica. So I'm going to go ahead and add this into the scale out replica table. Uh, let me go ahead and see if I have that. OK, so I can see that it has been enabled now. And uh, so this is a logic you kind of built into it, and I can see this is my scale out replica, All right? So, so you use yeah. you are using this in your application to uh, yes. build the connection string in the in the runtime that if there is a replica, use that replica. Is that the logic you are having in application? It's exactly, oh. exactly. That's a and smart I, one. Yeah. Okay. I think that's how uh, uh, you know modern developers will need to be using their applications to make use of these additional resources, uh, right. and it's it's a pretty simple thing as you can see. So uh, let me go back to our locust application and uh, let me go ahead and stop this. Uh, I'm going to run a new test now. So, so, so what's the number now? Like what is the current number we are looking at? I think uh, shopping cart has like average is 227 millisecond. OK, that is right. Yeah, so 340 at 340 at 90th percentile. OK, I'll remember those numbers. Yeah. OK, so I'm going ahead with the same number of total users to simulate this. OK, and let's wait and see how that comes out. And uh, while doing that, let's go back and look at uh, the resource stats on our primary. Okay. Um, wow. That is reduced. Yeah, certainly reduced. And um, so this, this is not gone away. It's definitely going to uh, be on your read replica. So uh, maybe. Oh, just okay. So essentially, you have just shifted the load. So okay, okay. Now, uh, now I get it. So basically, uh, rather than spending time and tuning queries. All right. you did is uh, you just redirected the, uh, the the data scientists workload to the other rep. Oh, that's smart. OK, that's, that's exactly what we did. And okay. you can see here uh, this yeah. seems to be a very heavy workload. So, you know, you go back to your um, uh, developer and he says it's it is a, a resource intensive workload and we require that kind of power. And with okay. name replicas, uh, you can do this. You can just go ahead and you can go ahead and configure your named replicas uh, to actually have a different skew, right? So uh, hmm. you're on the replicas page and if you have your named replica, it just is like another database, just that it's read only, but you can go to it uh, and you can 
work with it just like a regular database. Uh, so I can come to the compute and storage here and I can tell the guy that, uh, you know, you require scale. I'm going to be able to give you those V codes by maintaining my primary at whatever, uh, you know, V codes we had. So he or she can finish their work early and uh, you know not yeah. put a load on the on the other so can you see the oh uh, look at the numbers time oh. Here? Oh. Yeah? that has become it, it was it's, 3d lovely i remember right right okay. so you're still getting to have those concurrent requests on your primary server uh your uh, other uh, read workloads may be still intensive and you can scale up and scale down as you want you know it could be a simple power bi report users and you don't need that many cores so you can have different named replicas for different uh workloads so that's that's about named replicas and if i have 30 data scientists i can create 30 named replica and give one to okay. each and <laughs> Go figure and then my production. Wow, that's that's pretty neat. OK, good, 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 good. And, uh, and you said I can have a different uh, size uh, of the replica as a number of V4. Uh, yes. I can have independent of primary. That is pretty cool. OK, yes, that's good. OK, so that's that's also if you think about it, it's also saving costs for you uh, when you're going to be using a named replica with maybe a smaller week or uh, you, uh, yeah, you know, you, you, you can do that. And, yeah, I think uh, there, there could be multiple use cases, right? You want yeah. you want a primary to be low on lower analytic analytical workload to go on named replica to be higher or other way around, right? You want prediction yes. to have uh, you know, ATV cores, but I don't want ATV cores on my read only work. <laughs> I can have two V cores on read only workload. That's pretty neat way to save money. You you know what I want, right? Okay, good. Yeah. And and the best part is it's all dynamic. So even during the peak hours, just create yeah. a name replica, scale it down during Sorry. the loop. Yeah. yeah. So that, that's that's it. and another thing I must mention is when you're creating these replicas, uh, automatic Azure hybrid benefit is applied, which means uh, roughly about 30% less than a usual database cost. So mm. it, I think it's great because if you want to architect your solution to scale out instead of scaling up, you can, I think, uh, save a lot of costs on your entire solution, right? So whenever uh, you know, you're seeing an issue with uh, your response times being slower, uh, there were two ways you could do it. You could either just uh, add a lot of more V cores to your uh, uh, you know, database or you could scale out. So I think uh, uh, these are smart ways in which you can optimize your database. That was a pretty good demo, Pooja. Uh, is there any way uh, your customer can try it themselves? Absolutely. So uh, this is available on GitHub, the entire demo. Uh, uh, so credits to my colleague Davide for uh, uh, you know making this demo, and uh, it's all out there for you to try. It's a super easy one, so you should definitely try it. Wow, so that's great. I think uh, since we're on this slide, it's a great time for a summary. Uh, you know, our company, the DPS India Gross, are hugely benefited from hyperscale. So let's do a quick summary of how these features really helped us. So uh, going from uh, the back, you know, we saw for reporting purposes, uh, our developers were able to use uh, named replicas, optimize costs with different kinds of uh, named replicas. Uh, for each kind of uh, reporting workload or analytic workloads. Uh, we had the HA replicas for higher availability. Um, we had the geo replicas for region related outages uh, to have a DR there. Um, you showed us some really cool uh, a snapshot backup uh, and restores, uh, which happened really quickly and uh, saved us the headache of having to go back to uh, when you wanted the data refresh. Um, and uh, DPS India Grocer grew uh, with an unprecedented growth and hyperscale was there for us uh, to rapidly scale up. We saw how we went from a 2V core to 80V core in a matter of like less than minutes. And all this was possible because of uh, decoupled storage and compute like we see seeing on the screen. But we also discussed how uh, hyperscale is not just about VLDB or like huge scale and size, it is something that can give a peace of mind to companies that are starting out. It can have smaller databases. You're just going to have less number of you know, paid servers that you have there. And uh, the best part was about the time to market. Um, you know, it was uh, the code base is just going to be the same old SQL server that we know and love. 
Uh, so it's going to be the same application programming model. So I think all in all, hyperscale has really helped, uh, uh, you know, DPS India grows up, make a lot of money, have an online reputation. So I'm super happy. Thank you for uh, showing us all these things, uh, Balmukund. I enjoyed being the customer yep. and the PM. Too. Yep, same here. I also enjoyed being a customer for some time. <laughs> I think uh, we can quickly uh, go to the slide. Uh, and I don't think there are any slides, right? It was supposed oh, to be it, a it, no it slide. Yeah, yeah, no slide show. So we 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 could have, we did a lot of demos. Yeah. So I think uh, uh, these are the slide uh, where we thank Microsoft. I think the last slide where you can uh, you have multiple ways to uh, win the prizes. Uh, we are uh, online to answer the question which you might have. Uh, so feel free to ask the question on the chat, and then we would be able to answer them. Thank you very much and see you later. Bye. Thank you guys. Thanks for watching us. Bye bye.